Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to be discussing whether you should grip up on the club all the way to the end of the grip or whether you should choke down on the club. We're going to take a look at the performance differences when I choke down on the club or grip to all the way to the end of the grip with a driver, 7 iron and pitching wedge. I do expect that when I do grip down on the club that the ball will fly a little bit lower and maybe be a little bit easier for me to control. If I grip to the end of the club I may expect that it may be a little bit harder for me to control. I'm not sure how much distance I am going to lose so I'm really excited to hit some shots here and take a look at the data. If you haven't done so already Make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can click on that subscription button down the bottom there. Also, while you're at it, give us a thumbs up and click like on this video as well. I'm ready to hit some shots and take a look at the numbers. This was a pretty fun test. I could definitely notice a difference of where that golf ball was hitting the screen. When I choked down on the club, it definitely hit the screen at a much lower point on the screen where when I gripped to my norm normal position or a little bit higher up, it flew a lot higher. So that's one thing I definitely kind of noticed. But let's take a look at the numbers compare drivers and seven irons and pitching wedges and see if there's any differences or similarities. So first, the driver. When I gripped to the end of the golf club, I was getting club speed around 111.5. For me, that's been pretty close to my average club speed for the year, kind of ranging from about 110 to about 113. Um, but really interesting how when I gripped down on the golf club, my club speed dropped to 103.9. There's been an interesting topic re recently with regards to driver shaft length and whether you can pick up distance by going longer and picking up club speed by going with a longer golf shaft. You can definitely notice the club speed difference by choking down on the club and then gripping to the end of the club. I did achieve more club speed when I gripped all the way to enter the golf club. And I think that was to be expected, probably the biggest expectation I would have seen with regards to the results. If we take a look at ball speed, I, you know, I was about eight miles an hour left with regards to ball speed when I gripped down on the club, as opposed to when I gripped to the end of the club. One thing I do want to bring up really quickly is the smash factor. When I gripped down on the club, my smash factor, it was reading at 151. When I gripped to the end of the club, it was 148. So it's showing that my efficiency was better when I gripped down on the club. However, the spin rate was higher. So what I do want to do is I want to bring up the hit location on when I was gripping down on the club. So when I gripped down on the club, that was the last shot, a little bit high on the face, a little bit towards the heel, a little bit more towards the heel, and a little bit high heel. So really interesting when I gripped down on the club, I was catching a little, mainly slightly towards the high heel of the club. When I gripped to the end of the club, slightly on the toe side, slightly on the toe side, slightly high toe, and slightly on the toe side. And what happened when I was catching it slightly on the toe side versus on the heel side was the spin rate was better. So my spin rate 
was 400, 350 RPMs lower when I gripped to the end of the golf club as opposed to gripping down on the club. And that's definitely hit location related with regards to spin rate. That's actually interesting because I would have expected if I had gripped down on the club maybe to catch it a little more on the toe side because I'm shortening that club and bringing that club closer to me. But the opposite happened. So that may be related to me just not used to being in that setup, being standing so close to the ball and having my swing get a little more vertical on me that I just came across it and caught it on the heel. Um, if we look at launch angle, when I gripped to the end of the club, 15.4, pretty solid numbers there for a driver. When I gripped down on the club, nine degrees. So it was six degrees lower with regards to launch angle when I gripped down on the club. Big, big difference in carry distance. 290.7, going 311 when I gripped to the normal length of the club, 245 yard carry going 277 when I gripped down on the club. So I lost a lot of carry distance there. And a little bit of that is related to attack angle. I didn't change anything, but my attack angle went from 4.4 degrees hitting up on the ball to almost having a very neutral attack angle, so to 0 0.3. So I hit up on the ball 4.1 degrees more with my uh, gripping to the end of the golf club. Now, ideally, I want to hit up on the ball because I have nine degrees of loft on my driver. And for me to be really efficient, I need to hit up on the ball to hit the ball pretty far. So that's where I lost my distance. That's where I lost my height. Speaking of height, when I gripped to the end of the golf club, I was, the ball was flying about 130 feet in the air on average. When I gripped down on the club, my height was almost half, it was 71 feet in the air, and the consistency dropped a little bit there too. I was more consistent when I gripped to the end of the club. I was hitting it higher and more consistent, and I was hitting it lower and less consistent when I gripped down on the club. So what I can see with driver so far is I would recommend gripping to the end of that golf club and uh, not really trying to grip down, to the, down on the driver and trying to control it. Just kind of let it let it do, do its thing. Uh, if we look at the dispersion here, the orange circle, that was when I gripped to the end of the club. You can see how I had four pretty solid swings right down the middle there. When I gripped down the club, I was hovering a little bit short and left there with regards to carry distance. Total distance was definitely quite a bit shorter there as well. I think also what I want to touch on really briefly is when I gripped to the end of the club, I had one ever so slight miss it. That was the one that only had a 1.5 smash factor. But the big difference was the, the gear effect helped me out. I didn't know I know I didn't hit that one very well. My ball speed dropped by about five miles an hour on that shot, only 160.9. But the spin and hit location helped me out for sure. So that was gear effect helping me out on that shot. That was my miss hit. And that brought down my smash factor number there with regards to comparing the, the two of them there too. So interesting with the driver. With the driver, I recommend really not gripping down on it unless maybe you've got a howling wind and you've got to hit the ball a little bit lower and trying to control it that way there as well. So usually a lot of times I'll say tee it high, let it fly, and trust the driver and hit it as far as you can. I mean, just that's the biggest thing I notice with driver is when we try to control it by gripping down on it, we lost quite a lot of distance. We lost club speed and distance. So let's move on to the 7-iron. So the 7-iron, when I gripped to the end of the club, I was 89.6 miles an hour with club speed, 84.9 with gripping down. So I lost about 5 miles an hour with club speed. I lost about four miles an hour of ball speed. So really interesting that, once again, my uh, efficiency was better when I gripped down on the club with regards to smash factor. Spin rate changed a lot. So with the spin rate, when I gripped to the end of the club, I was spinning about 5,800, 5,300 when I gripped down on the club. So less spin. Launch angle dropped by four degrees kind of interesting how my carry distance really didn't change here. So my carry distance and my total distance weren't far off from each other. So when I gripped down on the club, my carry distance was 181.4. When I gripped to the end, it was 184.3. Going 
go on 192.7, go on 190.8. So pretty similar numbers with regards to uh, carry distance. The spin rate made up for it. The spin rate helped to get that ball to go a little bit further. So the biggest difference is going to be stopping power. So when I gripped down on the club, the ball stopped. It was like 11.3 yards from 181 carry to 192, when it was about six yards of stopping power when I gripped to the end of the club because the ball was flying a lot higher. So 184.3 going 190. So my stopping power definitely changed. Uh, my attack angle, once again, changed. I hit, actually hit down on the, the ball more here with the seven irons. I had a little more turf interaction versus gripping to the end of the club. I didn't hit down on it as much. My dynamic loft, I presented almost five degrees less loft on the club when I gripped down on it. So I compressed the ball better. Uh, when I gripped to the end of the club, I didn't compress the ball as much. Uh, but again, the height height difference and landing angle is, is the big difference here. When I grip to the end of the club, 118 feet in the air. When I grip to the down on the club, 86 feet in the air. So we've got about 30 feet height difference. And then landing angle, 43.8, gripping down on the club, 51.3 when I gripped up on the club. So big difference there was regards to losing height, but still having the ball going really close to the distance. We look at the dispersion, the blue circle was when I gripped down on the club. The purple circle was when I gripped to the end of the club. I know it's only four shots with each one there, but you can see the dispersion circle was slightly smaller when I gripped down on the club. So I definitely was able to control the ball a little bit better. Ball just got there a different way, just at a different lower trajectory. And then finally, we have pitching wedge. So pitching wedge, I also lost five miles an hour of club speed when I gripped down on the club. I lost five miles an hour of ball speed when I gripped down on the club. My efficiency was slightly higher when I gripped down on the club. The spin rate was about 500 RPMs lower when I gripped down on the club. And my launch angle was lower when I gripped down on the club. Carry distance was just a little bit shorter. Um, and if we see here, the height was about 24 feet lower when I gripped down on the club, and the landing angle dropped about five degrees when I gripped down on the club. So with the pitching wedge and the seven iron, when I gripped down on the club, ball flew a lot lower, more piercing, lower spinning shot, able to control in the wind a little bit easier. But when I hit the driver, when I hit grip down on the club with the driver, I lost a lot of distance. That was the, the big difference there too. So my suggestion here would be with regards to gripping up or gripping down on the club with the wedges and the irons, it's not a bad play. If you're trying to keep that ball out of the wind, it's a great option to be able to help control the ball, have that ball come in a low, lower penetrating ball flight and not have the wind knock it around as much. It'll come into the green with a little bit less spin, so keep that in mind because the ball will roll out a little bit more. But big difference between the irons is the and the driver was when I hit the driver, I lost a lot of distance, and that was related to club speed. I lost eight miles an hour club speed when I gripped down on the club compared to gripping up. And then my hit location with the driver, I didn't quite ha catch it in the most optimal area when I gripped down on the club, but it was a little bit more towards the heel. When I caught a slightly high toe with the driver, uh, gripping to the end of the club, which is my perfect hit location. So I lost 45 yards of carry distance when I gripped down on the club. So big difference in height. Um, really interesting topic here to talk about with regards to gripping up and gripping down on the club. I recommend playing around with it out, outside and seeing how they perform. But I definitely recommend with the irons and wedges to work on this to be able to control your golf game. Thanks for watching. Bye.